Hello, everyone. Welcome to 2020's KubeCon North America. Here is the signal intro and the deep dive talk. My name is Dong Chen. I am a software engineer from Google and currently working on GKE and Ansos. I am one of the founding engineers for Kubernetes and initiated the signal the back in two, uh, 2016 together with Derek. Derek? Happy to be here. My name is Derek. I'm an engineer at Red Hat. Uh, like Don, I've worked on and around the Kubernetes community for uh, a very long time. And uh, I also work on the OpenShift product uh, from Red Hat, which is our Kubernetes distribution. Uh, Sergey, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, comparing to you two, I'm newest addition to Signode. Uh, I've been in uh, Signode for two years and uh, I work for Google and uh, working on GKE. Done. Before getting into today's agenda, I want to briefly mention the previous the signal update we made at the KubeCon Europe earlier this year. We You can access related slides, records by click, clicking those links. Here is the today's agenda. And we are going to first recap signal's responsibility. Then we are going to talk about the current activities since the last update. The roadmap profile, the 1.25 to 1.6. And uh, we are. then some of interesting projects and uh, efforts currently driving by Signal. Signal version two, in place pod resizing, event PLED. After that, we are briefing introduce uh, several new sub projects initiated by Signal since last update. Kernel modules, dynamic resource management, and batch group participants. Then Sergey will update us with the CI project, which is the highest priority in our community. Finally, we are going to talk about how to get involved with and how to get help from the community. What is the signal and its responsibility? Let's briefly talk about the node responsibility in Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a cluster orchestration solution for containerized applications and services including Kubernetes controllers running on the nodes. On each node, there is an agent called Kubernetes. Kubernetes uh, registers the node to the Kube Kubernetes control plane. Kubernetes together with the container runtime manages pod and container's lifecycle. And doing the, doing the uh, setup, run, tear down, and clean up. Kubernetes also does the node level resource management, such as the ensure of the services get the request resources, detects the node level resource starvation issues, and take actions to prevent the out of resource situation. Kubernetes also sends the status back to the control plane. I always call Kubernetes the brain of the node. In summary, Signal owns all controllers running on the nodes, which ensure the node itself and applications running happily. Signal is very large and on many projects. You can click the link here to find them all. Recently, starting 120, we've been focusing on eliminating permanent betas. Permanent beta is a feature that enters the beta stage. We start collecting feedback and uh, accumulated many customers and many usage of the feature, but never made it official GA. And create some uh, confusion among customers and generally bad for software. So we deliberately tried to eliminate uh, betas as well as did uh, other major deprecations like Docker, Docker shim removal. Uh, we've been doing a lot. Uh, we removed and G8 uh, features and we graduated very small features that uh, been used already, but uh, we never had time to be officially called GA. But uh, the work is uh, not complete yet. Uh, we still have a few uh, feature gates and features are still in beta. They go all the way to back to one uh, four uh, of Kubernetes. We're working on eliminating this as well. Uh, at least two of them are planned for 126 and we will be working on the rest of them to make sure that we don't have any permanent betas. We also have uh, very old features that are uh, long in beta, uh, like uh, CPU manager. But for this kind of uh, features, we have actively, we are actively working on new policies and uh, collecting feedback to make sure that this feature is done right. So even though it's beta for a long time, we actually working on that. That's why it's still in uh, this status and not uh, graduation uh, to GA yet. That said, we 
even with this focus on eliminating permanent betas, uh, we're still working on new features. Uh, some of them brand new, some of them just uh, updating alpha to beta. Uh, we are currently at 21 feature gate, give or take for Signode, and um, all of them are uh, being worked on in parallel. And uh, Derek here will uh, give us some uh, update on what exactly happened in 125 and what is our plan for 126 and onward. Thanks, Sergey. Uh, so in in 125, we graduated a number of features that were in development to stable or generally available status. So what this meant was that the feature was well tested, well understood, and documented, and offers a backward compatibility guarantee going forward. Two I'll highlight here that I think are particularly interesting are those issues numbers that are low. Uh, Kubernetes has been a a project for a very long time uh, and some features take a long time for us to mature and bring to stable ephemeral containers is a good example of that you have a feature that is changing the life cycle of a pod and how we run uh, containers in those pods so it's really good to see that feature go to stable in 125 and start to close out these very early issue numbers in this case 277. other uh, features of note here ephemeral storage capacity isolation so you can schedule on node local storage uh, that graduated to stable. Uh, C groups V2, which we'll discuss in a little more detail later, is also stable, so we can better support uh, newer, more modern uh, Linux distributions. Uh, an example of a use case that was removed from the kubelet uh, was uh, the uh, ability for the kubelet to advertise particular GPU accelerator usage metrics. This has now been offloaded to individual GPU device plugins and vendors. And then lastly, uh, a feature that went to stable that I, I really appreciate is uh, now you can identify the, the operating system that is required by a pod. So if you're running Windows nodes or Linux nodes, you can actually look at the pod now and know this should land on a Linux node or a Windows host. Uh, very helpful feature. Uh, next slide. Uh, we had fewer features graduate to beta. Uh, the one of note here was enabling seccomp by default. Uh, this has been uh, long explored, and so it was good to see that this uh, feature continues to make uh, progress. One, one note I'll make about beta concepts going forward is it used to be beta features were on by default. There has been a posture change in the project to make beta features off by default. So keep that in mind for future beta graduations. Uh, and then last, uh, Sergey noted, we are continuing to explore new, new features. So things that are alpha typically mean that they might not be as uh, richly tested. They're definitely off by default. Uh, the problem space they explore are, are complicated and often need more time to mature. Uh, the one issue I will highlight here is uh, user namespace support, uh, which you can see had a very early issue number of 127. User namespaces has been a complicated topic to talk about throughout Kubernetes, and the problem space is large, as, particularly as it intersects with storage. And we chose to make some forward progress in the space to try to facilitate user namespace support for stateless pods. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see that uh, that feature continue to evolve going forward. So as we look ahead to 126 and onward, we are hoping to continue to make progress on better uh, resource uh, sizing of pods, particularly allowing you to resource uh, update resource requirements in place for things like CPU and memory. Uh, always in SIGNode, we're trying to bring down the management overhead of supporting your nodes so you have more resources available for your workloads. Uh, to that effort, you'll hear in this discussion more detail on an effort we're calling the Evented Plug. And then security is a concern, obviously, in the Kubernetes community broadly and to our users. So areas of uh, improving the ability to better integrate with secured uh, image sources uh, is important, and you'll see work in that space. And then finally, uh, as we look to support the evolving environment, we are trying to explore possible prudent evolutions of both the pod lifecycle and uh, resource plugins that pods might consume uh, going forward. You'll hear more details on those in this presentation. So let's dive a little bit on C groups V2. We talked about this a little bit in the last uh, Signode update, but I think it's important to uh, emphasize now that it went stable, so it will likely get more production usage. So as we go to the next slide, just to level set and to remind folks, C groups V1 uh, and V2 have had feature parity support since Kubernetes 1.24. But many Linux distributions or many environments where users were running workloads in production were still only using C groups v1, and uh, v2 support is 
still something that we are anticipating feedback on uh, in the years ahead. We are not actively deprecating secret V1 support just because we added V2 support. We will tolerate both uh, C group controllers for an extended period of time, except as we add new resource management features into uh, SigNode's domain, we will likely uh, only do new resource controllers on V2. If you are exploring Linux hosts, whether that's a newer Fedora, Ubuntu, COS, or distros, it's very possible that those distros now default to boot into Secret V2. And so it would be great now that the Kubelet can work in a stable uh, base uh, on that platform. Uh, so you definitely be aware as you're exploring this feature, there's not a unique knob to turn on. It, it kind of is self-identified based on how you configured your operating system. For new features in the space that we're excited about, we do think that uh, Kubernetes can offer better memory quality of service. And we have work in flight today around this in the Kubelet to uh, support that. As well as we think that there's opportunities to explore the UMD user space, add a memory killer to ultimately make the node more reliable. What should you do to get ready for Secret Suite 2 as you're exploring putting it into your environment? Just know many workloads actually have no dependency on the secret version. It should be transparent or opaque to you. If you are using Secret Suite 2, we do recommend that you use the systemd secret manager for your container runtime and the kubelet when you deploy. Finding all possible issues for a change like this is hard to automatically discover. And sometimes we expect uh, feedback or you might discover that intersectional projects or solutions that layer on top of Kubernetes may have had unknown dependencies. So for example, if you are using a security or a monitoring agent, it's likely they need to have some updates to support that C group B2 environment. But we uh, have done a lot of work here and we believe many agents have already uh, updated. So it should be smooth. Domain specific challenges, just to be aware of, uh, in certain industries, there might be a unique C groups V1 feature that was not yet present in V2 that uh, may have been explored. And where those have come forward, we try to uh, redirect engagement into the appropriate upstream kernel community to get that capability capable of, of, if possible. If you're using uh, container images where you might have particular runtimes in those images, sometimes you might need to update those runtimes in order to take to have awareness of a C groups V2 host. So for example, on Golang, you might need to manually set go max box, or if you're using older JDKs, you might need to update to have your JDK be aware of a V2 uh, environment. So uh, for those who are starting to explore this and wanna give production feedback or areas for improvement, please reach out uh, to the Signal community and we're excited to uh, continue to see this be successful. Next slide. Uh, Don, you wanna talk about in-place pod resizing? Thanks, Derek. I'm going to talk about the ongoing feature in place of pod resizing. Before we get into the detail, I want to uh, quickly summarize the auto scanning features offered by the Kubernetes today. The horizontal pod auto scanner automatically adds the remove, uh, adds or removes pods based on the usage rate of your application. So when the usage rate of your application goes up, auto scanner adds pods for you. When it's go down, the auto scanner automatically removes the parts. This happens based on the CPU and the memory by default, but it's also possible to use in customer metrics. This is great after handling more requests when you have the enough space to run more parts on. But if there's no space to run additional parts, even if the horizontal part auto scanner wants to add more, out of luck, unless you are using cluster auto scanner. What the cluster auto scanner does, it is it adds more resources to your clusters. In these cases, more machines, more nodes that pods can run on. Those two features together address scale out issues, but in many cases, the application would run out of the memory and a heavy node. And there wasn't a real good way to estimate how much memory was needed at any given time. Vertical pod auto scanner helps modify the resource provisioned to an individual services. Like if a pod doesn't have enough CPU or if it has too much of the memory. Vertical pod auto scanner exists to automatically set up-to-date resource limits and requests for the containers in, in their pods. It can both down scale pods that are over-requesting 
uh, resources and also upscale parts that are end requesting resources based on their usage over time. So far, everything works great, except vertical uh, part scanner up part CPU or memory resources that require part of the stats. This is very di disruptive to the services and uh, expensive for long running applications. It is very important to have the ability to scale part resources without restarts. So in-case part resizing is designed to address this problem. This is a non-desired features and the signal to initiate this discussing back in 2015. The project was actively designed and implemented until 2018 by Vinay. Last four years, Vinay, together with the community, have iterated and evolved the design and implementation several times, along with several new resource management features, huge page, swap, SQL over two, and so on. Finally, we are ready to release the alpha version in 1.26. I'm calling out this ongoing feature today to get the communities and the users' attention. Please help us to review and test these non-desired features and share your feedback with us. I want to talk about evented plaque as a, one of the highlights of this release. Uh, we plaque or pod lifecycle event generator is uh, was an improvement over the way how Kublet uh, knows about container events. It was improvement over uh, every pod controller was querying uh, its container statuses itself. It was very racy, like we, we need to talk about uh, parallelism and like uh, who, how many requests a container runtime needs to handle. Pod lifecycle event generator was uh, is a single thread kind of uh, releasing of all the containers on a node. It uh, asks the status of this of all those containers and uh, then uh, make uh, updates on its own, understanding what container is doing uh, based on this uh, status. For instance, if uh, if it knows that the container was running and now it's not running, then Kubelet may decide whether this container needs to be restarted or something else needs to happen with, with this container. Um, what uh, this is working very good. Uh, we pod lifecycle event generator works great uh, on uh, existing environments. It's simple. Uh, implementation is very straightforward. It guarantees consistency because all the time we just take all the containers information. We don't rely on uh, container runtime being able to generate events for us. Uh, and performance is acceptable. Open source Kubernetes only supports uh, up to like hundred something pods, and uh, some environments support a little bit uh, like. I mean, two times more, uh, but uh, in general, it's it's very um, it's okay. Uh, like performance-wise, it's okay. But uh, we started receiving more requirements. Um, we have environments with many pods, and every pod has many containers. We have uh, high availability requirements for workload, and some workload wants much faster failure detection that we can provide with a listing. Also, we have uh, more. Uh, questions about low overhead environments like edge devices where even releasing uh, takes a lot of uh, overhead and uh, needs to be eliminated or done way way less often so black v2 will be uh, streaming based uh, we will rely on container runtime to give us information when something happens instead of us asking constantly if anything changed so this is supposed to be this should be very good uh, improvement it will help a lot and we hope that uh, you will install a new version of Kubernetes and uh, will get free CPU cycles out of it just because we uh, made some uh, imp internal improvements. So again, uh, we've been talking about 126 roadmap and we've been uh, asking feedback for one GA feature, one alpha feature, and uh, gave you a highlight of internal improvements we're making with things like invented, invented plaque. Now we want to talk about new projects and new sub projects that we're running. And we start with Derek. Yeah. Uh, so one of the new uh, sub projects that Signode has have formed since our last update was around improvements to support kernel module management uh, on Kubernetes platforms. Uh, for those who are interested in exploring this space, you'll see there's a new repository in the Kubernetes SIGs GitHub organization where uh, approaches to kernel module management on Kubernetes nodes are being explored. If this is a area of interest for you, uh, please reach out to contributors in that repository and help make the solution broadly available for the community as a whole. 
uh, we're excited to see new new projects like come on. Uh, Dawn, you want to go next? Dynamic resource allocation is another non-desired feature. While Kubernetes adopted by the industry as the standard standard container orchestration, we are seeing the increasing leads to better support non-native compute resources on Kubernetes, which is covers a wide range of the resources, such as the GPUs, high performance leaks, infinity bands, and so on. And uh, such resources often require vendor specific setup and they have a rich set of the different properties, even cross devices of the same type. This is to bring a new requirements to the Kubernetes. Signal proposed the initial design back in 2018, and, but they didn't prioritize the implementation due to the complexity and the overhead and immature and also the dependencies. So the new design is proposed with the narrow down scope. Now it is was it was approved for 1.25, and hopefully we can have the alpha implementation for the 1.26. Uh, but we 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 want we call out uh, for this feature today because we want to get the community's attention. We also want to call out uh, the complexity uh, along with this feature mm -hmm. to the Kubernetes management. Next, I want to talk about Batch Work Group uh, participation of our SIG. Batch Work Group uh, was formed very recently as a response for it has been not ideal environment for running uh, batch workloads. Many jobs, uh, we, we have many problems with job scheduling and ways to control job execution. Around Kubernetes, there are many third party vendors who is uh, who providing ways to run jobs on Kubernetes, but all the solutions are quite hacky and uh, they require some uh, changes in core of Kubernetes. And this is what we're doing. Specifically from Signal perspective, we concentrate on uh, caps like retriable and non-retriable job exit codes. So we will be able to be more granular which jobs needs to be retried and which jobs fail forever. And we don't want to waste resources on that as well as some lifecycle controls uh, like Keystone containers cap that we're discussing that will help with scheduling jobs with sidecar containers and such. Plus jobs are very uh, resource intensive. Uh, typically they don't have any weight expecting some user. They just doing a lot of calculations. That's why we need to be as, as much resource aware as possible and uh, all the NUMA aware scheduling improvements and uh, device plugins improvements. Uh, it all helps uh, with batch work group and uh, with job execution. And all of that, all of the sub projects are only possible when we keep our SIG node uh, stable and uh, all the code reliable. Uh, we keep running the CI work group. It was formed two years back and we keep running it since. Uh, we did a lot of uh, pr good progress. Uh, we had very successful releases uh, recently and uh, we keep improving some old failing uh, tabs in test grid. So we recently improved NPD test grid that was failing for a long time and nobody paid too much attention. We finally get our hands to it and uh, it was fixed, uh, as well as some other improvements. We are running more uh, environments like Cryo was added to be tested regularly and uh, now it's most of the time green. Um, so we are doing a lot of work. We uh, get some regression over summertime because less people were participating, but uh, uh, now um, we hope that uh, this work will be resumed and we will do more work on test classification. So we know which test uh, needs to be looked urgently and which test can be a little bit uh, less urgently plus doing more permutation of uh, which test to run and when. We are tracking our work uh, in uh, GitHub project during our meeting. This board is publicly available. You, if you want to contribute and you don't know wh where to start, you can always pick up work from this board. We also proactively controlling reliability signal by triaging bugs uh, for signal. And again, uh, if you're interested which issues customer experience with uh, Kubernetes and, and specifically with SIG, you can join this meeting and hear discussions uh, we have on bug triage for uh, all the signal bugs. And um, as I said, there are many issues and uh, we need to get you involved. Done. Thanks, Sergey. Um, there are many of the things going on in within of the signal. 
by far signal is the third largest of the community within Kubernetes. And also you can see that from here and also introduced by the CIG previously. We have so many go going on. And uh, uh, signal by the workload, they have the 200 uh, plus of the average open PR per week. We also merge uh, 20 to 30 PRs every week and close every week. We also have the developer and the contributor from all over the world and from like more than 39 and companies uh, dedicated to work for the improve of the signal. And we really need more people, uh, more contribution from, from you, from the community. So how to contribute? And uh, here's the our signal node agreed uh, priority. First thing, we are really keen on the stability and the sustainability. So there's the effort for the CI project, which Sergey just mentioned earlier and uh, we charge the issues and uh, those meeting it is uh, a hold every wednesday please uh, join that uh, effort if you want to uh, help on the signal and get us to start that is the first thing you can involved and we also start to focus on optimization and reduce of the management overhead and make uh, our load more efficient and the third one it is there's the more features there's the there's the, some like new sub project initiatives. There's the also ongoing features and the graduate alpha feature to beta, then to the GA. So there are many things to going on. The, and also to help of the user and the developer, we have a lot of documentation and the user guide and the developer uh, guide. We need the, we need to put put the effort in, and uh, so welcome to contribute and get get involved and contribute for all those items and the categories. How to contribute and also how to get help if you have you are as a user. You can attend our SIG meetings. We have the two SIG meetings so far regularly hold. One it is the regular signal meeting uh, every Tuesday, um, which is cover features, caps, designs, even issues. We also have the every Wednesday have the CI and the triage meeting, which is the smaller, but the, and the, which is goes to all those issue, uh, user issue sparks and the test failures. Then you also can join our our uh, Slack channel and ask a question and and also write a proposal and uh, file the bugs issues to us. The please reach out to us and we also have the SIG note. Uh, a uh, mailing list, you can send off the suggestion and the feedback directly to us.